Hi, this is Aaron Reed with Verge.io, Solutions Architect, and today we're going to talk about how we migrate a VM from Hyper-V to Verge.io. The first step we take is we prep the Hyper-V VM. So we want to log into Hyper-V and we want to verify the VM settings with inside of Hyper-V. This way, when we go to rebuild it in Verge.io, we know what those settings look like. So we'll look at the RAM, the CPU, the disk, the networking, and any other thing that you might want to look at to set that VM up once you copy it over. The next thing we'll do with that is we'll shut down the VM in Hyper-V so that you have a nice, clean, consistent copy when we copy the Hyper-V VM disks over to Verge.io. The next step that we'll do is we'll copy that Hyper-V VM disk over, those would be the VHD or VHDX disks, into Verge.io Media Image Repository. And that's simply um, a simple process of copying the disk through the Verge.io interface from a maps drive from your Hyper-V environment. The last thing we do is we create a new, new Verge I.O. VM using imported Hyper-V VM disks. So we create the VM in Verge I.O. first, and then we assign and import the Hyper-V disk to the new VM, and Verge I.O. does this automatically in the interface. And then we set up and assign the networking and start the new Verge I.O. VM, and confirm that the VM is up and running and everything is good to go. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into our Hyper-V environment and check the settings on the VM that we want to migrate over to Verge.io. Um, to do this, you can see here I'm already logged into my Hyper-V and I have my VM highlighted, the Win 2022 VM. If I come in here, I can click on settings on the right hand sidebar. When I bring up the settings, I can look at the things like the memory. I can see it has four gigabytes of memory. Some of my procs, I have two virtual cores or two CPUs on this VM. And then I can look at my hard drive as well. I can see it has a SCSI controller, which doesn't really matter to us when we move it over. That's okay, because we're gonna import the disk anyways. And then I can see where it lives though, and that'll give me a good idea where I need to copy it from after I shut it down and I move it into Verge.io. So with that, we'll go ahead and cancel out of that. And then to verify the VM's up and running and everything looks fine, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that VM up. Here you can see I'm in the VM. To prove that it's live, let's go ahead and click on Chrome here. That should bring our, our, our website up for Verge.io. It's taking a little second as it comes through. Here you can see the ultra convert software with Verge.io. We'll go ahead and minimize that again. And then we're gonna go ahead and shut this VM down. The important thing about shutting this VM down before we move it is we want a nice clean copy of the VM. It's consistent um, so there's no missing data on it. So we're gonna go ahead and shut it down. And that VM will shut down. And once that VM shut down, we can start the process of copying the VHDX over to Verge.io. Next, I'm going to go ahead and log into my Verge.io environment. Here, I'm going to log into the main dashboard as my admin to do the copy of the Hyper-V VM into Verge.io. I'll go ahead and click Submit and log in. The next step we do is we go into our Media Images Repository. In my Media Images Repository, to, to move the VHDX file over, we simply come over here to the Upload. And once I do that, it brings up a window that says choose file. I'm going to go ahead and choose my file. Now I have my Hyper-V VM already mapped over the network um, for the directory where the VHDX files live. Here's the VM, the Win 2022. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that guy, click open. And then in here, we'll put a little description. And then on this side over here, I can pick my preferred tier. In my environment, I have tier one and tier three. They're both all flash. I'm gonna go ahead and pick my tier three. That's the one I typically use for storing images on. I'm gonna click OK or upload. And once I click upload over here on the top right hand of the menu bar, you can see I'm uploading the file. It's getting around 350 megabytes per second. It's going over a one gig of pipe. So this will take a few minutes and we'll come back to it when it's finished. So now we can see that our VHDX file has been moved over 100%. If you see up here in the window, upload progress. So I can go ahead and close this. And I'll close that guy. And here you can see where the file lives. The next thing we need to do is create our new VM to be able to um, import that Windows 22 VM over from Hyper-V that we just copied over. So to do that, I'll go up here to my breadcrumb in my header bar where it says Verge Prod. I'll click into my virtual machines environment. I'll double click again on that virtual machines and I'll click new. When we go to the new, this brings us into the building the virtual machine menu screen. I'll go ahead and click custom here because we're going to build it from scratch. 
using that VHDX file. We'll go ahead and give it a name. Here you can see I've already created this name once when I was doing my testing earlier. We'll just change the name a little bit so we don't have any issues there. Um, the rest of these settings can, you can set up pretty much set to default, except for that OS family. The hypervisor needs to know what OS is living inside of the VM. And then things like snapshot, profile, HA group, cluster, failover cluster, et cetera, can be set for uh, default. Over here, we do wanna make sure that we set the proper memory and core settings for this VM um, to the way that they were before. Um, you could increase these on the fly um, and the VM will just have to, um, when it comes up, it'll probably pick that up automatically. But for right now, we'll leave it the same for our gigabytes of memory. And here you can see, I can set it to gigabytes or megabytes. And I believe it had two cores. My CPU default, I'll leave that as a default. It'll pick up the, the CPU from the hypervisor, my boot order. A couple of things we do wanna do, because we are moving it from Hyper-V to Verge.io, which runs on KVM and QEMU, we wanna check this box for the QEMU guest agent. That way we can see what's going on inside of the VM and the hypervisor can talk to the, the VM through the agent. And the last thing we wanna do is check this UEFI box. The reason we have to check that UEFI box is because UEFI settings are set up in Hyper-V for this VM. And that's pretty much it. I click Submit. It says your virtual machine is created successfully. Okay. The next thing we wanna do in this VM is we have to give it two things we haven't set up yet is a network and then also that VHDX drive that we just imported. So first thing I'll do is I'll set the network. We'll go ahead and click New. We'll just pick VNIC1. My virtual interface, I'm gonna pick an Intel E1000 because this VM may or may not have my QMU uh, guest agent or Vert IO drivers installed on it yet. And if I pick that Intel E1000, I know it'll pick up the network automatically. And then I'll go ahead and click External. And that's pretty much it. Then I'll come back to my VM up here. And then now we'll assign it the disk that we just copied over from my Hyper-V environment. So here I'll go in my drives. Here you can see it automatically creates that EFI disk from that UFI setting that we set when we were creating the VM. So to add a new disk that we just copied over from the Hyper-V environment, I basically come over here and I click on new. Here, we'll give it a name. And then in my media, I can leave, I, I will go down here and I'll pick import disk. Once I click import disk, it'll automatically find the disk that I have a copied over from a different environment. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna change the interface from Vert IO SCSI to SATA AHCI. The reason we do this is we might not have the Vert IO SCSI it's installed, um, drivers installed um, on this VM already. So it won't pick up that drive when it goes to boot. But if I change it to SATA AHCI, I know it'll pick it up automatically. And then, I can go ahead and just click Submit. And when I submit that, it basically starts importing that disk into the, the VM. Now this typically takes a couple minutes, so depending on the size of the, um, the disk. So, and you can see it's converting it over to raw. And I'll go ahead and just, uh, we can come back to this in a couple minutes. So it looks like importing the drive has already finished. Here you can see the disk that we just moved over. If I highlight it there, um, it's no longer importing. So the next thing we'll do is we'll basically go into this VM and we'll get it started. So I'll click up here on my VM. Now I'm in the VM, I can see I have two drives. I have the one NIC set up, it shows it stopped. I can see my CPU cores, I have two cores and four gigabytes of memory, and it's an OS family of Windows. Now to start this VM, we basically come up here to this little start button and click on start. Yep, power on that VM. Now, here you can see, here's the VM dashboard. It shows it's running, it gives me my VM name to start that VM, but let's go ahead and jump into the console. Now that we're in the console, you can see the Verge IO default BIOS and it's booting up that VM. Oh, it's going faster. We do have that option to press escape to get out of the boot menu. And here you can see it brought the VM up fine. We'll basically come up here to our, our control panel for that console. Do a control alt delete so we can log into the VM. Yes. Go ahead and log into that VM. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my control panel buttons there. I'm in the interface of my VM. You can see it says um, <laughs> mowing to Verge IO. I guess that's not moving, mowing. Um, and it brings up the interface. 
And to check that we have connectivity on our network, we come over here to the network, you can see internet access is up. And voila, we're connected. And that's it. Thanks for joining the video and we'll see you next time.